WBC Bantamweight Champion Nonito Donaire calls out WBO Bantamweight Champion Janriel Casimero's camp on social media, claiming that they're all talk, but have not contacted his promoter, Richard Schaefer, to actually set up a fight. Donaire and, of course, uh, Casimero have had uh, some history, and he's uh, in particular calling out empty promotions for not making the fight happen. Uh, Ryan, they were already supposed to see action to begin with, right before Nonito pulled out of the fight and Rigondo stepped in. Yeah, that was um, sort of our summer surprise. or it, it was <laughs> And then all hell broke loose. And it's unfortunate because that had... That was just one of those guilty pleasure fights that, first off, you don't really expect to see, and it's almost like a, like almost like, hey, you know, what if they, what if they fought, what, what would happen, and then out of nowhere, that fight gets announced, and then before uh, we can even process it, it gets called off. Uh, Nonito Donare, of course, uh, cited uh, some of Casimiro's comments, uh, claiming that he had disrespected uh, Nonito's manager and wife, Rachel, and. I guess that was the the bridge too far, and uh, the fight was pulled. And you know, and it was really, it really seemed like Nonito was uh, canceling the fight out of principle, uh, and that's and that, that's a real uh, punishment there because a that's a big payday for um, for Casemiro, which he lost out on, and b um, it was actually a punishment to the rest of the world because then we had to go see Guillermo Rigondeaux fight. So. Uh, everyone sort of lost out on that one. Uh, there were no winners in that, but hopefully they can put it aside and uh, unify these belts because that's a great fight. That's a great civil war. That's a that's like Oscar De La Hoya versus Fernando Vargas. That's like um, Chavez versus Oscar De La Hoya. There's a lot of stuff outside the ring that sort of needs to be worked out there and a lot of egos, and kind of want to see that happen. Yeah, but, uh, and, you know, it's, it's supposedly – like a, a three-horse race with Naoya in a way, allegedly docking Casimero and Casimero, you know, floating the half the peace sign in front of the cameras and, uh, you know, flipping the <laughs> he bird. He's number one. Yeah, he's, he's saying he's number one, but with the wrong finger. Uh, you know, so he's, he's really carrying himself with a lot of swagger uh, over the top. Uh, some people would say very rude, uh, but... Seriously speaking, I don't think Nonito would be ducking uh, Casimero by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, this, this is a guy who's already the oldest in the weight class to be world champion. He, you know, he's been a replacement fighter. He's, uh, he's, he's done so many things and accomplished so much. I just really don't see why the fight won't happen. Uh, I think that if the fight doesn't happen, yeah, there are a couple reasons. I, I think number one, Casimero is... He's a good champion, but he's still not that well known outside of you know the boxing circles. So you can kind of get away with not fighting him. So it'll you know Casimiro really does need these other guys like Inoue and and Donaire to sort of lend their credibility to him, and that's what they were you know kind of withholding. Uh, Inoue has already uh, mentioned Ca Casimiro on um, social media. He said he wants that fight. They were supposed to fight. The pandemic sort of uh, postponed that fight or canceled that fight, really. And that fight has not been rescheduled yet. I think that, you know, and then that's not certainly not to say anything because, you know, people are who they are. I think maybe these are just guys who really don't want to be around Casimiro. <laughs> I think that's just, the, I don't think it's because of his, him as a fighter. I think it's just they don't like him as a person. Uh, you know, he's not everyone's cup of tea. I get along well with him, but, you know, I can understand why uh, Inoue and uh, Donaire are a little bit cross about him. <laughs> Would you think that uh, maybe uh, maybe a uh, Inoue Casimero fight might happen first? I mean, first of all, uh, who else is on the horizon for Inoue? He's, you know, Rigondeaux, you know, put himself out of the picture with his running, uh, running man stint uh, against Casimero and then in a way, he's already beaten uh, Donaire, and I beat him two years ago. So you think that might happen first? I think that Donaire has something to bring to the table now, though. He won a belt, and so uh, that might entice Inoue. And that was a great fight. That was an amazing fight when they when, uh, Inoue and, uh, and Donaire went, to get, went at each other. Uh, you know, that was the most vulnerable we'd ever seen in Inoue. Yeah. I think that 
Casemiro, of course, you know, he has something to bring to the, belt, to the table as well. He's got a belt. So the, both guys would would be reasonable fights. And I think, though, that Donaire and anyway have this mutual respect, uh, almost like this mentor-mentee kind of relationship because they had a relationship when Inoue was coming up. Uh, so that, that might, there might be something there that they can work on. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's hard to tell. You know, Casemiro didn't do himself many favors with that last performance. And, uh, you know, even if he did get the win over Rigondeau, uh, Nonito had to sort of have a, have a smile on his face that, uh, you know, he, he had to kind of be in that, in the ring for 12 rounds, uh, you know, waving at air all night. Yeah. So you, you think that, uh, might've hurt Casimero's stock a little bit? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, I don't think, I think the people he couldn't make say, the fight happen. I think that's what people are saying. Yeah, but also, like, you get, like, you know, whenever Rigondeaux gets in the ring and, you know, he does all this stuff where, you know, he does the boxing without, without the offense, you get the kind of boxing hipsters who say, oh, Rigondeaux won that fight. He was robbed. And, you know, they really believe. I, a lot of it, I think, is performative when they when they talk about those things. They're like, look at me. I appreciate the the boring box that no one else likes. I'm like, come on. You got to throw punches to win. Even, even uh, his own corner was saying that. So... But, you know, enough doubt gets created in people's minds and you start associating, you know, uh, that guy with, with a loss and, you know, they can kind of hurt a guy's credibility a bit. So, yeah, in a little bit, you know, it, it, I don't think it helped him at all. 